time for us to get started. Uh, do we have any prayer requests for tonight? I got a call from Gary Brantley earlier, and Sherry's not feeling very well. We'll just pray for her tonight, so we'll have prayer for her in a minute. And, and, yeah. yeah, and my uh, Aunt Leah uh, to Falcon. Leah to Falcon. Uh oh, you want to spell it? T A K L C O N, I think is how it's spelled. Don't hold me on that. But uh, she, uh, I know she had a shoulder surgery and she has had a back surgery about a month apart. And, I guess she's having some complications with the back surgery. Okay. So. You want to spell that last name one more time? I think it's T A L K C O N, I believe. C O N? C O N or C A N. Oh, one of the, the Falcon? It's, yeah. I'd have to look it up. <laughs> yes, sir. But I am officially. A great grandpa as of five fifty six yesterday evening. Hey, Seven pounds and three ounces. Seven pounds and three ounces. Praise the Lord. Butch McIntosh, my niece's husband, he's yep. had suffered with cancer and fought it for years and years. And they just got back from MD Anderson and they his kidneys were failing. No, yes, they said that uh Decided not dialysis right now, but that's what they're looking for. Full time dialysis. Okay. Butch McIntosh. Put Brittany Turner on there. Yeah, she, I saw. Uh, she had surgery this one. Actually, this afternoon, they was about six hours getting her back there. What kind of surgery did she have? Albert's asking what kind of surgery. She didn't say. No, she never did say what it was. Anyone else? Charles Scales. <clears throat> He'll get ready to come visit. God, we love you. We praise your holy name, Lord. And God, there's there's a lot of people who stand in the need of prayer. And God, we just lift up all these that have been mentioned here tonight. God, we lift up uh, Sister Sherry to you and pray, God, that uh, you'd bring healing to her her stomach issues that she was having today. And this uh, Lila Talakon and Butch McIntosh and Brittany and Charles Scales, we lift them all up to you, God. And, we just pray, Father God, that your will would be done in their lives. And Lord, there's some that are sick and hurting and need a healing. There's some of those who are who are in need of salvation. And we just pray, God, that, uh, that you'd meet all their needs for you're the great physician and not just for healing, but you meet spiritual needs and spiritual healing also. So God, we just pray, Lord, that uh, as the end time approaches and we can see it coming, Lord, and it's very evident that it's getting closer than we need to step it up. We need to pick it up a notch. And there's a lot of people who are in need of salvation, they're in need of repentance, and they're not getting the word. And we just pray, God, that you'd help us to, to get more excited, to um, have more zeal, uh, to be more diligent, God, to spread the word of the gospel for the people who need it. Because, Lord, you are the answer to the woes of this world. And, Lord, no one's going to make it to heaven apart from you. And so, Lord, there's a lot of people who hadn't darkened the church door in, in, in years. There's people who talk filthy, who live in adultery, who fornicate. There's all kinds of evil and wickedness, that yet they claim that they know you. And I pray, God, that, that you would give us, grant us a great awakening, God, that, that we would realize, God, our great need of you, not as, as individuals, as churches, and as a nation, God, especially for our nation, we lift up our leaders and pray for the evil God that, that's over, overtaken our lawmakers and caused them to do things that they would never have done in the past because they want to remain in power. 
God help them to change from that, Lord. And it's never too late to do what's right, and it's never a wrong time to do right. But it's always a time to do wrong, and it seems like that's what they're always after. So God help us, Lord, to, to be a, a people who are called by your name, who others see Christ in us. Help us to be those people. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. All right, if you got your Bibles, go ahead and turn to the book of St. John, chapter 12. We're going to be starting in uh, verse 20. And that, what we left off last week. Uh, somebody read for me, if you would, verses uh, 20 through 36, please. And there were certain Greeks among them that came up to worship at the feast. The same came before to Philip, which was Bethsaida of Galilee, and desired him, and saying, Sir, we would see Jesus. Philip, cometh and telleth Andrew, and and again Andrew and Philip telleth Jesus. And Jesus answered them, saying, The hour is come that the Son of Man should be glorified. Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. He that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it until life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour, but for this cause came I unto this hour. Father, glorify thy name. Then came a voice from heaven, saying, I have, glorified, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it, said that it thundered, and others said, An angel spake up to him. Jesus answered and said, This voice came not because of me, but for your sake. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. And I... If I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. This he said, signifying what death he should die. The people answered him, We have heard out the law that Christ abideth forever. And how saith thou, The Son of Man must be lifted up. Who is this Son of Man? Then Jesus said unto them, Yet a little while is a light with you. Walk while ye have the light, lest darkness come upon you. For he that walketh in darkness knoweth not whither he goeth. While ye have light, believe in the light, that ye may be the children of the light. These things spoke Jesus and departed, departed, and he did hide himself from them. Okay, so we find here that Jesus is just playing some unusual things for the Son of God. We're seeing that these people want to have an audience with him, the Greeks. Now the scripture tells us, and, and I can't remember the exact location of it, maybe some of you know, that the, the Bible says that the Jews seek a sign and the Greeks always seek some kind of knowledge or they like to, to have these wise sayings and they believed in many gods and to them Jesus was if he was who he said he was was just another one of them gods so when the Greeks came and, and requested of Philip that they could see Jesus he went to Andrew and Andrew and, and uh, Philip went to Christ and, and Christ never said bring them y'all notice that? 
he didn't he didn't ask an audience with them at all because uh, you know that uh, uh, when he began to to converse with them about the things he said the hour is is come that the Son of Man should be glorified Jesus had a, a lot more on his plate right now than to convince the Greeks something he knew he couldn't convince them of amen and you know, the, the Lord, the Bible tells us in Genesis that before the, the earth was destroyed that he would not always strive with men. This time of Jesus is drawing mighty short at this time, and, and he's got a lot of things to teach, and he hasn't got time, and, and I don't want to put it up because the Bible don't say this, but he didn't have time to waste it on these Greek philosophers. Amen? And that time to waste on them. And, and so... Uh, he, he, he was more concerned about telling the people who he was with what was fixing to happen to him. And, uh, and you know, the, the, the Greeks came to him because of, of these miracles that he had done, that they knew about. And, and there's something that we need to, to address right here. Uh, Jesus did not come to this world to be a spectacle. Amen? He didn't come here to put on a show for everybody that says jump. Mm -hmm. He didn't come here, you know, when, when he, he went before King Herod, King Herod told him, show me a miracle, show me a miracle. He didn't come for that. Nor did he respond to such things as that. So he didn't come to be a, a spectacle or a novelty like a circus attraction. Yet today, in our churches today, in a lot of churches today, there is a, there, they feel like you had to put on a show that you have to put on an attraction. Amen? Now, let me tell you this. There's no greater attraction, in my opinion, than presenting the truth of the Word of God. Uh, but people aren't interested in that. They don't want to hear truth because it interferes with their fleshly lifestyles. So they'd rather hear anything but that. And so he, they, he, he didn't uh, talk to them. He didn't, he, he, he didn't want to... To, to be put on the spot by them. Uh, and, and so today, in today's churches, there, there's a lot of things that, that are just that way. We feel like we gotta do this, or we gotta do that. And you know, a lot of churches put on music musicals that, that's more like uh, rock concerts that we used to go to where everybody smoked dope and drank beer. And, and those are the light shows and all. Is there anything wrong with that? You know, when people come to the house of God for that and not for the Word of God, there's, a, there's something wrong. Amen. Amen? Mm -hmm. Now, I know we beat on our head and crack on our head all the time about what, what can we do to bring more children? What can we do to bring more youth? We need to desire to have more youth and more children. Well, let me tell you what. It don't need to be all about the show to attract them. Amen? The power of God, when Jesus did all these miracles, it was to attract people to himself. He didn't do miracles on demand. He didn't do those things. And a lot of the people that he did miracles on were born for that purpose and had those issues for the purpose of him glorifying the Father in them. Okay? He says that a lot in the Scripture. He's the Son of God, and we can only come to him as the Father draws us. Huh? Think about that. Only the Father, according to John chapter 6, verse 4, 44. Let's see if you can find that right quick. Read that for us. John chapter 6, verse 44. Just a couple of pages back. No man can come to me except the Father which has sent me, draw him, and I will raise him up at the last okay. day. Okay, Jesus himself said, no man can come to me except the Father draws him. Now, the Father must draw a person to Jesus before they can come to Him. A person that just comes for whatever reason, I'm going to come because my buddy did. You know, that's the danger of having children start coming to the altars. A lot of them just follow suit. And they, they're, they're like little ducklings sometimes. And so you have to really talk to them and see what their understanding is. And I've actually had a parent got mad at me one time because I told them I didn't think their, their daughter uh, was was understood what she was saying, and she got really angry with me. But when I asked the little girl questions 
about who she believed in, which is important to Jesus Christ, because he tells us what we're to believe. He shows us what we're to believe. She couldn't answer any of those questions. She didn't know. And so I thought, well, it just ain't quite time. And I did that to several of the children, and then later on, uh, they would get saved and they would understand. But one of, the, one of the things we don't ever want to do is tell somebody they're saved when we feel they're not. Now that don't make me a judge. But I am in a precarious situation where when those children come up here, I need to know that they understand some things. White. <laughs> Brother Jeremiah's here, white. Every time he walks out that door, when are you going to baptize me? He's been asking me that for months. When are you going to baptize me? I said, when you get saved. Are you ready to get saved? And he'll just look at me and out that door he goes. But he wants to be baptized. Mm -hmm. And I told him, I said, you know, baptism without salvation, just getting wet. We don't want to waste our time uh, doing that. We don't want you to think that that's, that's your salvation. So I've noticed he started coming up to the altar. We need to pray for these kids. Mm -hmm. And he comes up here and he, he sat right there on the end of that altar here a couple of weeks ago. And he just sat down and closed his eyes. Well, you know, that's a step in the right direction. But he, he still needs to understand who it is that he believes in and who that, that belief is in and what Jesus and who Jesus is. That's a basic fundamental of salvation is believing that Jesus is who he is. And we need to be able to understand that. We need to be able to know that. And it's my firm opinion that a child to me because of what Jesus said, and except you all become his little children, you can't enter in. That these little children are, are destined for heaven if something happened to them before that time of, of, uh, accountability. of, of accountability arises before the Lord starts drawing them to him. Now what draws him right now is his family, his parents are bringing him to church every Sunday. Now listen to this. Now don't, don't wait to use kids and grandkids that's 30 years old and wonder why they don't go to church. They got to be brought. They got to be taught. And when, if you've never brought them and you never taught them, then you can't, ain't got no right to wonder why they don't. Amen? Amen. And, and so that's something that we, and a lot of us just let that time slip by. But, but we, can, we, can, we can still be an example to them because there's a lot of people who didn't even get saved right after their kids were grown. But no man can come to the Father except uh, or Jesus, except the Father draws. And if that means a light show we ain't going to draw them to Jesus. Amen? Now can, can, the, can the time of worship uh, uh, and, and praise cause that? Yes, it can. Yes, it can. Time of worship and praise when a person's heart is focused on Jesus. But that's why I don't like these light shows and these 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 uh, uh, metallic light bands up there because they're not focused on Jesus. They're focused on what's going on. They're focused on the show. And and if they if you don't have a show, they're not interested in you. Amen. And so this is something we gotta gotta uh, be aware of. That, 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 and, and so Jesus uses an analogy here. He uses the corn and the wheat. Amen. And he said that uh, a, a corn of wheat has to uh, die and uh, fall into the ground and die and before it can it can reproduce. And so he, he's drawn this analogy and the glorification of Jesus was not being set up. He is not being set up on the pedestal. The glorification of Jesus Christ was going to be being nailed to a cross and put in a grave. That, and, and then he was going to rise. And he, he's trying to get these people to understand this. He's tired of being a novelty. He's tired, and, and you were going to see in a minute, it, it's evident that he's tired of this. Matter of fact, the Bible says the first time I ever saw it in Scripture, G, uh, John wrote that these things spake Jesus and departed and did hide himself from them. Amen? Now that's a sad situation, isn't it? Where the people that's seeking Jesus for the wrong reasons, he's tired of listening to that stuff, and he goes and hides himself from them. He don't have time for this. His time of leaving and departure is close at hand, and he's got a lot of stuff to teach people who are interested in salvation and believing in who he is. He's got a lot of things to teach them. That's in verse 36, by the way, at the end of this. 
And so he uses this analogy, the glorification of Jesus Christ. It will be his death, burial, and resurrection. He will not be on the pedestal. He will not be on the throne. He will hang on a cross. Amen? He'll hang on the cross. That is going to be his glorification. That's hard for us to understand, isn't it? You know, God's ways and our ways ain't even nowhere near the same. Now, to me, my glorification, being beat half to death and stripped down naked and nailed to a cross, ain't my idea of glorification. Is it yours? But it's God's. It's God. Why? Why? Because the wrath of God had to be put on His Son for mine and your sins. We're going to be studying in Revelation here, not too in the near, uh, near future, about what the wrath of God looks like. Well, the wrath of God we're going to see in the Great Tribulation fell on Jesus Christ for us. Think about that. That great wrath of God that fell on, that's going to fall on this world has fallen on His Son for me and you. Good gracious. We ought to just be praising and thanking Him every day for what He endured for us. He bought us. When the Bible says He bought us with a price, He paid for it dearly. Amen? A price greater than most people are willing to pay. And so this he, he, he will not be on a pedestal or a crown. He's going to be on the cross. He's going to die and be buried and in a tomb. And, and like I said, God's way is, is certainly not our way. And, and so these things have been planned since the foundation of the world. They have been prophesied over and over. They have been told uh, in numerous times by Jesus Christ himself. Amen. And you know what? These people still didn't get it. They didn't get it. They didn't hear it. They didn't know. They didn't understand. So the Lord in Revelation, when He tells us after He talked to every one of these churches, he, at the end of every letter to the church, He said, Him that has an ear, let him hear. He understood that, that we don't hear very well. I ain't talking about needing hearing aids either. I'm talking about we don't hear very well. We don't hear, we don't understand, we don't perceive, and sometimes I wonder if we even want to. That's spooky, isn't it? And I'm guilty too. We're all guilty of that, but that's not an excuse. And so God help us to have ears to hear and eyes to see and be filled with the Spirit uh, who, so the Comforter can teach us all things. If that corner we die and fall in the ground, he said, it bringeth forth much fruit. Now Jesus appeals to them that he says this. He said, serve me and follow me and go with me. Amen? That's what he says. Look at that in verse 26. If any man serve me, let him do what? Follow me. Follow me. Now what does that mean? Do as he says, obey do as he says and do as he has done. Okay, that's what that means. To follow me and where, and where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, him will my father honor. Amen. Serving Jesus brings honor from the father to the individual. Now remember, God ways in our ways. Now when we think about God going to honor us, that he's going to honor us if we serve Jesus. Is he talking about in this life or the next life? He is talking about, don't you think for one minute that you start standing up for the Lord God. You start getting out there and going in and up and down these streets and going in and out of these stores and you start talking to people about what God loves and what he don't love, the abomination. You start talking and you will get scalded. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Now that's not my idea of honor. But it is my idea of boldness. Because you can't change the truth no matter what the world believes. We cannot change the truth to draw lost people to God. Okay. That's the light altogether. The light will never come on in their heart if you're not telling them the truth. It cannot. Because the truth sets them free from sin from the bondage that sin has on them. It sets them free from the world. It sets them free from the flesh. It sets them free from sin. Amen? 
And it, only truth can do that. That's what the Scripture says. Amen? And that's why Jesus proclaimed Himself as the truth. He never was going to tell a lie. <laughs> he ain't told a lie for the first time. And so when this 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 corn of wheat, when it falls the ground, got to, to, to bear fruit, now Jesus appeals to them. He says, serve me and go with me and my Father will honor you. Now when Jesus spoke these words, the Bible tells us that His soul, and look at what it says, was what? Trouble. His soul was trouble. When he, because, see, he had people wanting to see him for miracles. He's fixing to die, and he knows he's fixing to die. He's trying to get them across of what's got to happen to him, what they've got to understand about him, what they've got to know about him, and yet all they're concerned about is what can you give me right now? What can you show me right now? I want you to put on this show for me. What's in it for me? Yeah, it's this me thing. Mm -hmm. I want to be entertained by Jesus. Woo-hoo. <laughs> I want to be entertained by Jesus. It's what I want to be. I want to be entertained. I want him to wow me. So he can do that. Has he ever wowed you? Absolutely. Yeah. Amen. He wowed you because you knew who he was and you knew he was doing what wowed you. Amen. Did he have to? Nope, he didn't. Why did he? Because you asked him to. And he did it. He don't always do that. So Jesus, as he as he in verse twenty seven, where where it says, "Now, now is my soul troubled, and what shall I say? Father, save me from this hour. But for this cause I came unto this hour." And then look what he does when he says this. Now it's almost like he he's you know we know he goes to the garden. And we know he asked the Lord to, if it's possible, take this cup from me. He got this on his mind. Jesus, as a man, does not want to die on the cross. Now, he's fully God, but he's fully man all of a sudden. And, you know, it, it, this is something that, and he's not only is he fully God, fully man, he's fully innocent. He's fully honest. He's fully truthful. And the words that he says, and we're going to see this in a little bit, listen to me, the words that he says in the gospel, we're going to be judged by these words. Somebody asked me one time, well, what good is a red letter Bible? You better, you better read them red words. Mm -hmm. the, the world's going to be judged by those words. Amen? Is it just the red words? No. 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 Why? Every scripture was given by him. How? The Holy Spirit. Amen? The Holy Spirit. Even the words that he's given. Remember, when Jesus was baptized, the Bible said the Holy Spirit landed on him. And the Spirit led him into the wilderness to be tempted. Remember? Is the Spirit still leading him? You better believe it is. Amen? The Spirit's still leading him. It sure is. So, as Jesus told these things, and uh, and, and spoke to them, it bothered him. Jesus is God, but he is also man. Now it's as if convincing himself, what shall I say? He's, he's talking to himself. Father, save me from, the, from this hour, but for this hour came I into this world. And it, then he says something. You don't think that the Son of God don't have, didn't have authority? You don't think he still got authority? Look at what he says next. Father, Glorify thy name. And what did God do? He spoke. He spoke in an audible voice. He spoke in a voice that could be understood. He spoke in a voice that could be heard. And, and, and said, Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have both glorified it and will glorify it again. In other words, the Father says, I'm not through yet. Now, let me ask you a question. Is he through? Now, no, we ain't seen nothing yet. This is a great deal. The glorification of Jesus Christ and the honor of him uh, bestowed upon him by the Father to be Savior of the world. He had to die to get it. He had to bleed to do it. We are redeemed by that blood. We're bought by him, by, by his blood. We're bought by that. That's what purchased us. Amen. And, and so he had to go through this. But let me tell you what, when this is over, 
It ain't going to be like that ever again for Jesus. Never, ever, no more. This is the end of that. Amen? And so, he, he, the Father glorified it, and uh, he, said, I, he said, I have both glorified it, and I will glorify it again. Now, look at the, the reaction to those around him. What was the reaction of the people who were around him? Thunder. Why? Why are they so dull of hearing? He spoke at the baptism of Jesus Christ. They said the same exact thing. It's just thunder. John heard it because he wrote it down. Mm -hmm. Amen? Now he wrote this down a, a long time ago. But he said they stood by and they heard it and that it thundered. And others said, well, an angel spoke to him. They never even connected it with the voice of Almighty God. They had been deaf to the voice of God ever since the time of Moses. When they asked Moses to go ask God to tell him don't talk to us no more, we don't want to hear his voice. You know something, bro? You know, look at those two incidents. And then look at when he spoke to Paul on the road to Damascus and at the Mount of Transfiguration. They scrammed. The ones that heard it and knew what he said, they were so afraid they, they booked it. <laughs> These guys right here didn't even understand or wasn't listening to what was said and put it off on thunder. Yep. So if they heard what he really said and knew it was from God, they'd have probably hit the deck or ran too. Yeah. Did you figure? Yeah, they would have ran. They would have ran. But some people actually heard voices. They just didn't understand that it was God. And Jesus answered and said, look in verse 30, this voice came not because of me, but for your sakes. Now, Jesus taught us something way before this. He said, my sheep know my voice. Now, he didn't stop there. He said, they hear me and they follow me. So the voice of God is, is done intentional. It's done for their sakes because of what Jesus said. And they, he, the Father knew when the, when the Comforter came and filled men, they were going to start understanding some of this stuff. Now you got to remember, this is one of the drawbacks with all these people. They don't know who the Holy Ghost is. They never heard of the Holy Ghost. They've heard of the Spirit. They know that the, the prophets were filled with Him and that they, the, the, He showed up and helped them out every once in a while. But they don't understand what's fixing to transpire with the death and the burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. They don't have a clue. And we're going to see in a minute why they don't have a clue. And it's going to kind of be shocking to you. It says, so, uh, the, he said, it came for your sakes. Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be, now look what he says, cast out. Mm -hmm. Is he going to cast Satan out with his death and resurrection? No, he's going to defeat Satan with his death and resurrection. He's not going to be cast out. We're going to see it in Revelations when he casts him out of this world. But in him, when he won this battle, when he wins this battle, it's as good as done. Mm -hmm. It's already a done deal. It ain't happened yet, but it's a done deal. Amen? And so he says, and, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto myself. I wonder, this scripture right here is associated with the, the serpent that was raised up on the pole. Amen? That's a, when he made a remark in another one of the Gospels, he said, as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so shall be the Son of Man. And if I would be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. You reckon when they made that brass serpent and hung it on that pole and stuck it up in the air, that they had one iota of a clue what that was representing? No, not a bit. Not a bit. <coughs> but it was all in God's plan. And listen, God don't waste his time. He does everything with a purpose and a plan. Amen. Mm -hmm. He does. We better we better learn that about God. Everything He's got is a, not only a purpose and a plan, but there's a time for everything. Scripture. You know, I had a, preached a funeral one time, and uh, uh, it was for my aunt. Matter of fact, and uh, I had a one of her children, daughters come up to me and she said, "I don't care what you preach, but don't you dare bring up there's a time for everything on the sun. I don't hear that." And she wasn't being ugly. She knew there was a time for death. She wanted me to say something else besides that. 
And, and But there is a time for everything. Um, so God got a time for everything, and everything happens, listen, in God's time. In God's way. Whether we believe it or not, He is in full control of the world we live in right now. Don't you think for one minute he ain't still in control. He is still in Even with the nitwit that runs the country, he's still in control. He's in control of the White House. He's in control of Congress. But he don't make us do things. Never has, never will. And this stuff that's going on right now is taking us to a place that he has planned already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen? That's right. It's already in the works, and, and the scripture is full of where we're going with this. And, and so he's using the wickedness and the evil of men. And, the, and when he said that men's hearts were on evil continually, did that change after the flood? <laughs> nope. Afraid not. It's still a fact. Well, wow. and so it thundered, they said. An angel spoke to him. They had no ability to hear the voice of God. Numb ears and hard hearts prevent people hearing God. Y'all remember that saying, numb ears and hard hearts. Amen? Oh, we got some numb ears and hard hearts in church. Not just this church, every church has got them in there. They refuse to hear, they refuse to change, they refuse to bend their will to the Father or to the will of the church. That is my way of the highway. That, that's a, that, that is a numb ear and a hard heart that causes that. We better start listening to the voice of God and understand the Word of God. And so now, now Jesus wants them to know that the Father's voice was, was for them to hear. And, and he said, uh, uh, just as it was at Jesus' baptism, because judgment is coming at this world, to this world, and the prince of Satan is going to be cast out. Judgment is coming. Uh, Satan is going to be judged and he's going to be captured. Listen, how many of you believe that uh, the end of the Antichrist is the end of Satan? Mm -hmm. no. no. It is not the end of Satan. It's the end of the Antichrist, not the end of the devil. Okay? Remember that. Just like when uh, when uh, Judas Iscariot, we're going to see this in a little bit, mm -hmm. the Bible says that Satan entered him. Yeah. When, when Judas Iscariot went out and hanged himself, did that end Satan? No. Mm. Mm. Satan ain't flesh and blood. Amen? The, the spiritual warfare and the things around us are not flesh and blood. That's spooky, isn't it? Let me tell you what. We're going to learn this in Revelation. I hate to keep jumping over into Revelation, but I can't help it. There are things here right now hidden from us that's going to be let loose on this world. Yes. And they're horrifying things. You keep looking and reading about the Euphrates River drying up. Did you know that's end time? Yes, that, that, means that, that means that the end time is here. That's right. uh, yeah. The Jordan also. When that river dries up, it's in Scripture that it's going to dry up. They keep talking about we got to do this and we got to do that global warming coming. No, it ain't God doing it because He said in His Word it was going to happen. He prophesied it thousands of years ago that it was going to dry up, and here we are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they say, "Well, my my," and you know what they're finding? They're finding cities yeah. that were under the Euphrates River. Mm -hmm. That means your Euphrates River wasn't always what it is now. It's much larger now than it was years ago. Because they're excavating these cities and these temples that was built that's been underwater and since it's dried up, they're excavating them. It's still dry enough for them to do that. They got it dammed up all up through these other countries and they're only letting spurts of water out at a time. People down below, Iraq's suffering greatly because of it. Amen. There's a lot of things that's going to move nations at the end time. Israel has made the desert bloom. <laughs> How did they do it? How did they make that desert bloom? Anybody tell me? Ocean water. Ocean water. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boy, they keep harping. We're going to run out of water. We've got more water in this country. This is the world we know what to do with. 
And they the only ones that took the time to, 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 to use the water and get the salt out of it and use it to live on. We're wanting to control the environment. We're wanting to control the climate. We ain't smart enough to do that. We're surrounded by water too. <laughs> Think about that. So one of the things that's going to draw people to want to get to Israel, they need water. When the Euphrates River dries up, then people that live where it's dried up ain't got no source of water anymore. And they're still getting water out of that river, by the way, to live on. They're not like us here. Anyway, that's I don't chase that too far. So judgment is coming upon this world. And he said, he said again, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto myself. Now John remarks that Jesus was signifying what death he should die. Amen? That's what he says. This, uh, verse 33, this he said, signifying what death he should die. And the people answered him, we have heard of the law that Christ abideth forever. How sayest thou? Jesus said, the Son of Man must be lifted up. And then they look at him, who is the Son of Man? Now look at him. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's almost to the point of ridiculousness. These, these people had heard the teaching that the Son of Man must be lifted up, but, but, but who is the Son of Man? We must know the answer to that question. We do. If you don't know the answer, let me ask you a question. Now I'm going to raise your hand. If somebody would just come up to you and ask you who is the Son of Man, what would be your remark? Now you could say Jesus if you wanted to. Would that be sufficient? Mm -mm. You got to tell them who He is. And I'm bewildered sometimes about how many people cannot explain what they must believe to be saved. That's spooky to me. We need to know who He is. We need to believe who He is. We need to be able to relate it to who He is. Because that simple belief can save a child or a grandchild. That simple belief can save them right in your house if they can understand that part. And when I talk to them as a child, that's what I want to know. Do you know who He is? you got to. Or you're not saved. Amen. Think about that. And so we must know the answer to this question. We must believe on the name and receive him. He is Jesus Christ, the Son of Man, Son of God, Lamb of God, the great I am. That's who he is. All right, any questions about this? All right, somebody read for me verses 37 through 41. We're going to do a short one this time. But though he had done so many miracles before them, yet they believed not on him. That the saying of Isaiah the prophet might be fulfilled, which he spake, Lord, who hath believed our report? And to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? Therefore they could not believe, because Elisha has said again, He hath blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted and I should heal them. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Now, we've asked the question so many times, why did these people not hear? Why are they known? Why are their hearts hardened? Why can they not understand the speech of Christ. Listen to it. The answer will stymie you. Because the Father didn't want them to. He spoke from heaven with an audible voice more than one time in the Gospels. At least three times I'm, I'm positive of. Maybe even more. Four times. And yet they couldn't hear. They couldn't understand. They didn't know. They were numb to it. Why? because he didn't want them to understand it yet. Now this, this is bewildering. Jesus wants his followers, he wants his chosen people, his disciples, his apostles, to understand who he is. This is God's way. That's why there's a church today. That's why there's preachers today. That's why there's teachers today. It's God's way, it's God's plan. Okay? It's God's way and it's God's plan. 
And so he said he had done all of these miracles, yet they believed not on him. And it's easy to think of the Exodus. Think about the Exodus. Now, what did these people see in the Exodus? What did they see before they left Egypt? Just one miracle, just boom, 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 boom. Great miracles. The first few affected them. But after a while, the Lord said, this ain't going to affect my people no more. And it affected everybody but them. They saw that. They witnessed it. You think they, the pillar of light and yeah. all that. They, they saw it. And, and then the, 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 the night the death angel came through and took all the firstborn, they said, you got to take this blood, kill the lamb, get in there, don't you come out. They knew it. They saw it. They heard it. They understood it. When they got to the Red Sea, what happened? <laughs> they were there. They walked through it. They saw what happened when the Egyptians tried to blow them. God closed it up and destroyed them. And yet, they denied him. They murmured about him. They had the cloud by day. They had the fire by night. They witnessed one miracle right behind the other one. They saw a, a quail come into their camp and they got to eat all the flesh they wanted. They had manna that showed up every day that they could eat. It was bread. They had it all. Their shoes never wore out. And when they got to the promised land, they didn't want to go in. They were scared. And yet Jesus came and he does miracle after miracle after he raised Lazarus from a dead and from four days dead. Wow. And they still didn't believe it. That's what I'm telling you. It ain't about miracles. It's nothing to do with those things. It's about hearing him. It's about hearing him. If you can't hear him, you're in trouble. Can't hear him, you can't follow him. And not only can, must you hear him, you must know what he's saying to you. Now I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be honest with you, I'm your preacher. And the first time I have ignored what I knew God was telling me to do. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to confess that to you. That, that original sin runs deep. I, he's telling me, to, don't do it, don't, and I did it. And I'm thankful, I don't know about the rest of you, I ain't thankful that Paul called himself the chiefest of sinners, but I am thankful for one thing, Brother Sam. He said, those things I know to do, I don't do, and those things I know not to do, I do them anyway. Praise God, he wrote that down. Yep. Yep. That means there's still hope for me, for the sinning preacher. Amen. That God's mercy endures forever, that he forgives us, that his blood washes us and cleanses us. Got to confess it. And I tell them we're sorry for doing it. But these are the things that these people saw. And, 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 and God proclaimed miracles all the time. Every day. Every day. There was something going on. And so look at this. So the prophecy that was prophesied. Now this quote came from the book of Isaiah, by the way. And, and it's hard to understand God. His ways are not our ways. And he is a, a God of order. And he has designated times and events already established. Some of them ain't happened yet. There's a lot of them that hadn't happened already at this time. What was going on in the life of Christ was a designated, established, timed event. He's a God of order. And Jesus was not going to die till the day of Passover. Why? Because that's what the prophet said. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> Think about this. There's a lot of things designated that haven't happened yet. They're going to happen. I don't care what scientists say. I don't care what uh, uh, archaeologists say. I don't care what any of them say. It's going to happen. And there ain't nothing they can do to stop it. It's going to happen just the way he said. The prophecy of Isaiah 53, chapter 53, verse 1, and chapter 6, verses 9 and 10, where Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? Now, when you're reading Isaiah and you look at that, you say, well, what does he mean by that? This. This is the explanation John. Now, look, this ain't red letter. This is John. John already had been filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost when he wrote his gospel. Amen? 
He, now he understands the Old Testament prophecy and the symbolism and the, and the significance of it as he looks back at the life of Jesus Christ. He sees this. And he's helping us to see it too. Amen? Look at this. And, he, and this came from Isaiah 53 and 1 where Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report, and to whom hath the arm of the Lord been revealed? John says because of this prophecy, they could not believe. And then in Isaiah, now listen to this. This is in Isaiah 53. The other one is in Isaiah chapter 6. Now, my calculation is correct. That's 47 chapters separating these two prophecies. Now, does that add credence to that scripture that says, study to show yourself approved unto God? If, if you just read bits and pieces of the Bible and spurts of the Bible, you ain't get it. You got to study it. Who would have ever connected Isaiah 53 with Isaiah chapter 6? John did. Because he witnessed it's, it's, uh, it coming true. Where Isaiah said in, in, uh, in, in 6, 9, and 10, uh, the reason is given. He had blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts. This is Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 and 10. That they should not see with their eyes, nor understand with their heart, and be converted, and I should heal them. Wow. That was the reason that John gives why they couldn't hear and understand Jesus. It was not time for him to convert them. Mm -hmm. Now let me ask you a question. Who is he talking about needs to be converted here? It ain't got the Gentiles yet. It's the Jewish man. The Jewish people. Has that time happened yet? No. And they ain't here yet. You know when it is going to happen? The end of the tribulation. Woo -hoo. Year seven of the tribulation. We're going to be studying them now. Amen. When, when the time of the Gentiles is fulfilled and the salvation comes to Israel. That's the time he's talking about. He, it couldn't happen right now. It was hidden from them, so they couldn't understand this is Messiah. This is the Christ. This is the one you must have. This is Him. They could not understand it. God did that to them. Why? Because He had to save us scrounge Gentiles too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because He had a designated plan, a designated time, a designated place. He's a God of order. He's still a God of order. Amen? And so he, he blinded their eyes that they couldn't understand, so they couldn't be converted. These people around Jesus were incapable of believing what they needed to. Now you think, now what? I just don't understand. I don't understand it, do you? Other than God's got a plan. And this is part of it. And that's good enough for me. Now, I also notice here that this, this, this combined prophecy John used from Isaiah was several chapters apart. So we, that's why we got to study. Amen. Now, the scripture also in Isaiah that tells us how God operates. And it's, it's found in Isaiah chapter 28. And it's one that I've quoted to y'all before. That when I first read it, it didn't make no sense. But as I read through the Bible, it began to make more and more sense. Where Isaiah prophesied that it was line upon line, line upon line, precept upon precept, precept upon precept, here little, there little. That is the way God has orchestrated and planned the coming of His Son and the end of this world. Now think about it. It happens how? Bits at a time. Whole lifetimes, whole generations, nations come, nations gone, and it's still moving on because God lives in eternity. He don't live in the temporary world we do, and it's still moving on. Amen? What we're living in right now, what we're seeing right now, was also a prophecy of Isaiah, not just Isaiah. But Isaiah said it well. We already see the time when evil is good and good is evil. Mm -hmm. We see a time of darkness. 
We, we see a time when men love darkness more than they do light. Jesus said the same thing. Isaiah said it. All of them said that. We see those times. We see those times upon us right now. Right now. Amen? Right now. And so it's bewildering. I know that it seems almost unfair, but what would, would have happened if they were to all have believed at this point? What would have happened? Look in verse 40, he tells us, He has blinded their eyes and hardened their hearts that they should not see with their eyes nor understand with their heart and be converted. And Jesus would heal them. Amen. One time. Amen. These things said Isaiah when he saw his glory and spake of him. Y'all listen to me. We can't even begin to understand the ways of God. And you have people, has anybody asked you, why did God do that? You ever heard anybody say that? Why did God do that? Why don't God just reach down and change things? He could. And He is. But not the way we want Him to. His time. Let me tell you what. There's things that are here. We, this is science fiction for a lot of people. But it's not. It's Bible. Did you know there's angels? I guess you could call them angels. In the Euphrates River. Mm -hmm. You know there's a pit somewhere on this earth. Well they are. Yeah. Did you know that they're going to, they're bound? Did you know they can't get out right now? Michael Garson. But you know what's gonna happen? Amen. When the wrath of God's poured out on people, he's not gonna be the one zapping them. These things are. He's gonna let them loose on this world. Are y'all listening to me? This ain't science fiction. This ain't made up stuff. This is the reality of the principalities and the powers of the air. We can't see them, but they're there. Mm -hmm. You can't see Satan, but he's here. You can't see the Holy Ghost, but he's here. Yeah. Those things that we need to be afraid of, that we keep biting one another about, we need to remember what we're fighting. It's not each other. It's them. And them, them are going to be let loose on this world. Mm -hmm. And they are going to become visible. Revelation describes some of them. They're spooky. Yeah. <laughs> God bless this generation that were held from knowing who Jesus was. God, thank, thank God that we are a generation who are allowed to know who Jesus is. We don't need to lose that. Amen? You know, the Bible says now in the New Testament, if the gospel, if this gospel is hid, it is hid to those that are lost. Amen? Amen? It ain't being hid by prophecy. It's being hid by people loving their flesh, loving carnality, loving the things of this world, and not wanting God to monkey with that. We call it lostness. That's who it's hid from now. Those that are lost. Y'all, we have put, and I know I'm facing quit, we have put our God so far on the back burner <laughs> Of our commitment. It ain't funny. Amen. We have. Everything else. Is before God. And we serve God. At convenience. We're going to get away from that. And a lot of us did it when we were younger, and we see our children doing the same thing. We see our grandkids doing the same thing. What do you do about it? You keep praying for them. You keep telling them the time is near. Show them the events around. You know what? We have access to worldwide everything going on in the world. Now you got to weed out the lies and the 
So I'm going to tell you, the devil is throwing a lot of false stuff out there too, trying to get people to, to point it in the right direction. So listen to me. We've got all we need, whether they dig it up, whether they find it, right here. Yeah. They don't have to prove it to me. They don't have to find the ark for me to know it, it, it existed. They don't have to find the tomb of Jesus for me to know he laid in it. They don't have to find Noah's ark. I believe in it. They ain't got to dig up any city that the Bible talks about. It's in there. It was there. Mm -hmm. They ain't got to discover any kind of people to, to say the Bible's right. They, if it says they existed, they did and they do. Mm -hmm. By faith. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And I tell you all this all the time. I pity these great-minded people who are so scholarly that they have wasted their entire lives trying to prove what they should have knew and believed to begin with. Listen to me. You're not going to save anybody by proving the Bible's true. You're going to be, they're going to be saved by faith, just like you were. Amen. They're going to be saved by faith because of faith. they felt the draw of the Father that led them to the Son, and they bowed down before Him, and they got saved. It don't make no difference how many aliens, how many spaceships, how many planets. It don't make no difference. He's still God. And He's still saving souls. Praise God. Any questions? Alright, we didn't get her up far tonight, did we? Y'all, I don't know about y'all. I don't want to get in a hurry. Mm -hmm. Let's go hurry back up. We got something you need to see. Hey, there's a lot to see here, isn't it? Both from Jesus and from John. I love these scriptures right here, these black black lettered verses that John tells us. What he didn't listen, he didn't know this at the time. He didn't know this when this was happening. But he knew it when he wrote it. And he interjects what he understands now as he writes. And that's what the black y'all think about that as you're studying this. When John puts the black letters in there, that's him. That's not Christ's words. That's him telling you what he knows now that's happening then. Amen. It's hindsight. And it's 2020. Amen. Amen. And now he's filled with the Holy Ghost and he understands what he was looking at. He was a witness to it. Praise God. We're a witness to a lot of things too. We're a witness to salvation, our own salvation, and the salvation of people around us. We're witnesses of that. And I believe it, don't you? Amen. Any questions or comments? Would you stand? Thank y'all for being here. Thank y'all for listening. Thank y'all for participating. And let's let's try harder. Let's let's do more. Let's quit biting each other and start biting the devil for a while. Amen. By this all men know that you are my disciples, the words of Jesus, that you have love for one another. Jesus' disciples do not hate anybody. They do not despise anybody. We need to be those people and find a way to love one another. Because he commanded us to do that. He didn't ask us. He commanded that from us. And it's what shows the world. Churches can't. How many of y'all ever heard people say, I can't find a church I want to go to. All they do is fun and fight. I've been in a few of them and fuss and fall. Ain't no fun to be there. People won't come. We don't need to be that, do we? We need to be a people who are following Jesus and loving each other. Amen. Brother Todd, would you dismiss it, please? Lord God, thank you that the light is still in this world.
This gospel is our life, the living Christ. Lord, we need to we need to be children of life. That's our responsibility. We have the truth here, Lord. Thank you for the deep study and, and conversation in, in the Word tonight, Lord. Let it edify and build us up. Let it motivate us to uh, study more, spend more time with you, to be hearers and, and, and doers that also, Lord, of the Word. Lord, I know I fall short. Many of us can say that. But, Lord, we just need to keep going forward. We can't do it without your help. you are given us your, your spirit, Lord. We can't do this thing in our flesh. Lord, but just give us the, the desire to follow your Son. Believe on Him and follow Him. And obey Him, Lord. We, we need your, your total help in that. Thank you for this church. Thank you for the blessing that we hear the truth here in this church. We want to keep that our, our main desire, Lord. Forgive us our sins. Keep us safe as we go, Lord. Bless everyone here, Lord. Remember those requests earlier, Father. Bring us back eager to and expectant, Lord, for, to hear from you again in the next service, Lord. Thank you for all you've done for us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.